Well, he did it. That's an awful lot of machinery to take off the ground. Not for Johnny Stevens. That guy can fly anything. Say, do you smell anything? No, what? The story behind this. Well, we got a statement from Thornton not five minutes ago, didn't we? Yeah, a statement. A Mamie Graft handout. He can't do that to us. What are we, men or rats? I don't know. I still smell something. Come on, let's run down that smell. OK. We're from the National News Service. I believe Mr. Thornton has made an official statement. Yeah, and I left it fluttering across the official field with the rest of the hot air. Look, this is personal. Johnny Stevens himself sent us here. Oh, well, that's different. Yes? Mr. Thornton, there are two gentlemen of the press here to see you. No, I don't want to see the newspaper, man. Oh, well, Johnny Stevens sent all right, I'll see that. We'll go right in. Thank you. So Johnny Stevens sent you? Well, not exactly. Oh, not exactly. Well, we did speak to him before he took off of the first of those bombers that you donated to the government. A million dollars worth of bombers is quite a patriotic gesture, Mr. Thornton. Well, it's my money. I wonder if it is. Early this year, you crashed every front page in the country by offering one million dollars to anyone who could deliver Hitler dead or alive. One million dollars for Hitler. One million dollars for bombers. I'd rather get it straight from you than, well, start writing fiction. Now, will you talk? I see. Well, I think I prefer that you get it straight. What you saw this afternoon was a monument to three men who undertook to satisfy a bitter and thoughtless hatred. My hatred of Hitler. I know better now. I've learned who our real enemy is. It was shortly after I made my million dollar offer for Hitler. I was in my laboratory here, dictating some notes to Miss Grange. And three men appeared in the outer office. They were a strangely assorted group. Hey, Steve, the joint's empty. Steve, why don't you forget about this? There's lots easier ways of making money. Sure. I know a soft spot on the south side you could knock off just like that. Look. I never done nothing small time in my life, and this ain't no time to start. Go on, knock at that door. Somebody must pay the rent around this joint. Yes? Is there a guy around here named Thornton? Well, Mr. Thornton's in the midst of an experiment just now. Perhaps you could call Look, him. Look, Toots, tell him he can play with his toys later. We want to see Thornton right now. Uh, would you kindly inform Mr. Thornton that Mr. Steve Maxick and two gentlemen are here to see him regarding his offer in today's paper? Thanks, Joe. You always make everything sound so nice. Quite a joint, isn't it? Yeah. Reminds me of the layout you used to have on top of the Billings Hotel. Gee, it was swell. The 15th floor, all for ourselves. In every room a night, man, chromium. Well, it wasn't bad at that. Mr. Thornton will see you. What can I do for you, gentlemen? I just wanted to find out uh, if this is on the level. Yes, Mr. Magic. I'll pay one million dollars to anyone who can definitely establish that he's dead. I don't quite get it. What's the idea? My brother was an exchange professor to Germany. The Gestapo murdered him because he insisted upon teaching the truth. What about the dough? You got the million bucks? Yes, and more. The reward money is deposited in the First National Bank. That's good enough for me. I think you can consider the little guy with a trick mustache the same as with a lily in his hand right now. I really believe you think you can do it. Well, apparently, Mr. Thornton, you don't know with whom you're speaking. Here, look at this. That's me. Shut up, Dutch. Steve Mashick, former Underworld Czar, and his two lieutenants, Joe the Book Conway, uh, that's me, and Hans Dutch Haverman, were released from Alcatraz last Saturday after serving 11 years of a 12-year federal sentence for evasion of income taxes. It would have been only 10 and a half, except for a little uh, legal technicality. Well, uh, then it goes on to explain about some of the deals we were in. Minneapolis bank robbery, Illinois pursuing, uh, yes, desperate gang fight, yes. Well, I can see that you gentlemen are well qualified. But, uh, Mr. Magic, it seems to me that this is uh, slightly different than your uh, 
usual operations. Ah, the guy's nothing but a mobster. He can be had. Same as any other big shot. Look, mister, we know all the angles. That's our racket. You just get the dough situation and all the papers signed up with Joe there and we'll be on our way. When Steve Massey takes a job, you get results. Right, boys? That's right, Steve. He's never missed yet, Mr. Thornton. Uh, except this once. Well, I'll have my attorneys draw up the contract in the morning. In the morning? What's the matter with right now? No, it's rather late. Hey, you're telling us. Your chief of police gave us 24 hours to get out of town. We ain't gonna be here in the morning, Mr. Thornton. Cutler speaking. Well, Cutler, can you drop down here right away? Now? Believe it or not, I'm going to close that Hitler deal this afternoon. And I need you to drop the contract. All right, Thornton. Immediately. Whereas all of the conditions being agreed upon, I, Samuel Thornton, party of the first part, do hereby agree to pay the sum of one million dollars in currency of the United States to Steve Magic, Hans Haverman, alias Dutch, and Joe Conway, alias the book, parties of the second part. Upon being furnished satisfactory evidence that Adolf Schickelgruber, alias Hitler, a resident of Central Europe, is dead. But Mr. Thornton, this is all so irregular that I don't believe it'll hold water in any country in the world. As a contract, no, but as an insurance policy, yes. As stated there in paragraph six, we are to be the beneficiaries of a policy on Hitler's life. We undertake to insure his death. Yeah, and we're the undertakers. Shut up, Dutch. Where did you study law, Mr. Conway? Alcatraz, 11 years of it. Well, if, if you gentlemen will sign. He's OK, Joe? Uh, just a minute. Uh, suppose we fulfill our part of the contract and don't get back. What happens to the money? Listen, baby, with a million bucks waiting back here for me, I'll get back. Don't you worry about that. But what if you don't? What would you like done with a million? Gee, what a sweetheart of a funeral you could have for a million bucks. <laughs> just build me a monument, will you? Oh, we'll stipulate a worthy monument in the contract. That's okay by me. When we say Hitler, we mean the real Hitler, not one of his doubles. Yes, uh, that's important. Uh, Hitler is known to have a number of men make up to look exactly like him, to fool even the Germans as to who the real Hitler is. Don't you worry your pretty little heads about that. <laughs> when I get my hands on that bird, I'll know him. I'll guarantee you that. I still don't see how you're going to hope to succeed. What are you going to do about the language? They still speak German over there. Nothing to it, mister. We used to run a beer racket in Milwaukee. We'll be along all right. Well, let's sign these things and get out of here. Say, uh, when we do get back, I'd like to have that dough in cash, in genos, okay? Any way you like, except gold. Oh, naturally. Gold wouldn't be legal. I, uh, I always like to have a pocket full of genos. <laughs> Makes me feel good, you know. I understand perfectly. Oh, incidentally, how are you fixed for money now? Oh, we got a few bucks between us. The warden gave us some. We can always pick up some more someplace else. How much would you get someplace else? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe a yard and a half, whatever they happen to have. Enough to get started on. We wouldn't have any trouble with that kind of dough. Well, I'd prefer that you concentrate on the business at hand. I suppose we call this an advance for operating expenses. Well, thanks. That's, that's perfect. <laughs> Anything holding us up, Joe? All set here. Put your racks on us. Good morning, Mr. Thornton. Good luck, Steve. So long, my piece. Say, while we're over there, how much would it be worth to you if we knock off Mussolini at the same time? Uh, maybe you're right, sir. So they left town by train and somehow managed to make their way to a recruiting station in Canada where they enlisted in the Royal Canadian Air Force. They traveled in convoy across the North Atlantic. Arriving somewhere in England, they became parachute troops. All as a part of their carefully made plans. Johnny Stevens happened to be the pilot of a paratroop transport, flying it for practice maneuvers. All right, Tommy, go ahead. You don't like these night jumps so much, do they, Captain? No, they don't, Johnny. Where's Captain Tanner? Well, he decided to take a little jump for himself. Say, how's he had 110 degrees? 
Well, change your course to 130 and hold it there in the automatic. That'll fly straight to Germany. But what is this? Look, son, if you'll talk less and listen more, we'll get along a lot better. I don't get it. You're flying us to Germany. Are you fellas crazy? Are you Nazis? Well, not Johnny, that ain't nice. How much gas you got left, kid? Only enough for a few hours. Even if we're lucky enough not to get shot down, we'll never make it back to England. That's tough, ain't it? This will mean a court martial for you fellas if we ever get back alive. Sweetheart, when we get back, we won't be able to carry all the medals that'll hang on us. <laughs> now be a good kid and center on 130. You don't want to talk to nobody, do you, Johnny? There's a cherry on our tail. He'll put buttonholes all over this old crate. That's what he thinks. Give me that. Straighten her out, kid. so we won't land so far apart. Go ahead, Joe. Well, see you later. I hope. <laughs> All right, Judge. Say, ain't we higher up than we was? Ah, oh, come on. Come on, Johnny, you too. Go ahead, jump. I'll follow you. Remember what it was I said to you about listening? Get out of here. mess you've got us in. I think it's kind of cute, even if I did think it up myself. Say, you all right, boss? Oh, oh, sure, Dutch. You made it all right yourself, huh? Yeah, okay. But I should be doing this sort of thing. Yeah. You know, I got a noisy stomach. Yeah, sure, sure. Where's Joe? Well, the last time I seen him, he was out on a limb. Say, that's a fine time for him to be uh, caught in free. You know what happened to me? Oh, yeah, we saw you. We saw you. Who do you think you are, Tarzan? Let's uh, see. Climbing trees in the middle of... Well, let's see if we got... Doe. Compass. Map. Flashlight, I guess we got everything okay. It won't be long now till we face the firing squad. What firing squad? I don't see none. You will. Don't you realize we're lost somewhere in Germany? Say, maybe you can show us exactly where in Germany. Here's a map. Now. Well, I'd say about there, 200 miles west of Berlin. Hey, that's a cinch. We can hitchhike that far, huh? Look at this road up there. Come on. If this is some sort of a game, would you mind explaining so I can play, too? Son, it's a military secret. Well, tell me one thing. Are you on our side or theirs? Duck, quick! Well, it's the right truck, but the wrong direction. Wait a minute. Here comes another one. All right, you know the routine. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, uh... Like I thought. No good, see? Just like old times, Joe. <laughs> Have one on the house. Good old days. Hundred dollars a barrel and no questions asked. Yes, oh, I get it. Now you fellas are gangsters. Not anymore, bro. 
We got a better record now. Here, have a beer in the house. Go ahead, go ahead. Take it easy, Joe. I want to get a hinge at that marker. Three hundred and forty-five kilometers. How far is that, Joe? About two hundred and thirty miles, I'd say. Hey, you said two hundred miles, kid. That ain't bad. It's all right. Go on, drink up, drink up. Hey, I've got a hunch you're German spies. Ah, you've been reading too many funny papers, kid. <laughs> hey, what was that old beer song we used to sing? Auf to Lieber Halstead Street, Halstead Street, Halstead Street. Auf to Lieber Halstead Street, all this is pain. Uh oh. It's the law. A couple of bicycles built for two right on our tape. Step on this thing, see how fast it'll go, Joe. I'll run him in this can. Well, okay, pull over the side. Dutch, just in case. I get you. Yeah, these are the men. You're under arrest. What's the charge? Don a veteran. You land by parachute, steal a truck, beat us at case all night, and then you ask, what is the charge? Look. Would we dare do all this in Germany without a very good authorized reason? Now, it may be you're interfering with something that concerns our leader very personally. Something we're not required to explain to any stray Kellner who happens along. Oh, now, Joe, now, wait a minute. Don't pick on the poor guy. He don't know nothing. But these things aren't given out for everybody to chew over. Listen, mister, we just got in from England. We know that. They found your plane. We must get to your district leader at once, like prisoners under guard. Can you fix that up? Yeah, yeah. That's fine. Will you get us some gasoline for our truck? Yeah, yeah. Good. You have your monkeys fill it up, get us an armload of breakfast, and then afterwards, you escort us to the leader, right? Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! And this is only the beginning, small fry, only the beginning. <laughs> There's something very strange about this, and I'm determined to get to the bottom of it if it takes me. Uh, don't know, Vetter. Your story of coming here is a message for the Fuhrer himself alone, I do not believe. Okay, okay, so that's your handler. You will speak respectfully? If the Colonel will permit. And we've gone to a great deal of trouble and expense, and I might add, taken many risks to complete our mission. It'd be indeed regrettable if we were stopped now at the very threshold of success by an officer of the Reich. What is your mission? To obey the Fuhrer blindly but faithfully. The death need be. How do I know you are what you pretend to be? What proof can you give me? We're here, ain't we? What kind of chumps do you think we are to put ourselves in a spot like this if we wasn't on the level? Who ordered you to fly these men to Germany? Nobody. I was on a routine training flight when these spies of yours stuck a gun in my back. Don't count me in on this. I'll have no part of your dirty Nazi trick. Ah, oh, here, here. Don't blame him, Colonel. He's just a kid. He don't know any better. He insulted the Reich? Yeah, I know, but he's young. You remember what I told you about listening instead of talking? There's no percentage in that, you know. As one officer to another, I demand to be treated as a prisoner of war. You will be treated as we wish. What base did you leave from? Alcatraz. Oh, is this something? Now keep that under your hat, will you, Colonel? We wasn't supposed to tell that to nobody. That's why don't you keep your mouth shut? Oh, what's the difference? He's one of the gang, ain't he? Yeah, sure. But orders are orders. Tell nobody nothing and report only to the boss. Gentlemen, you have represented that you are servants of the Third Reich, 
who are desirous of being held in protective custody until an interview can be arranged with our Führer. Is that correct? Those were our orders. Very well. It shall be done. Take them to the political cell 15. Captain Kramer, I have here four prisoners to be confined in the special political cell. Together, yes. With special guards on 24-hour duty to see that they are not communicated with by anybody. What's the idea? Wasn't you ever in stir before? No. I didn't think so. It's okay, go ahead and flop. Well, Dutch, how's that look to you? Feel at home? <laughs> I could sneeze my way out of this joint by leaving half trying. You may have to. Don't tell me. Just let me guess. Service. Send up a bottle of bourbon, some ginger ale, and ice right away. Hurry up! <laughs> Do you think they'll send it? Maybe they will, Dutch. Maybe they will. <laughs> you are so nervous. I do not like to see my darling so nervous. Perhaps you can help me with my problem. I am yours to command. Four Americans arrived night before last by plane pretending that they have a message which can be delivered only to our Führer himself in person. Pretending? Perhaps. Perhaps not. If I could make sure, I have at our intelligence traced them. Three are notorious criminals. One is a pilot whose plane they commandeered. He knows nothing. But as to the others... What are the others? I don't know. They are the kind of people our Führer would choose for a desperate mission. And yet? Yet what? Why should those American swine have the glory of bringing a message that may spell victory? When I have worked so long and so hard, for what? A prison post, a mere jailer. While if you deliver the message, you will sit at our Führer's right hand, high in the council of the new world bringing the victory message. Exactly. I must discover the message. And then liquidate the Americans. Naturally. You see how important it is? Of course. I understand perfectly. Time is so short. Only two days. Herr Dr. Merler is already waiting at the villa to give our Führer nerve treatments. I have been ordered to prepare a dance recital for Saturday night. And this is Thursday. Two days. No time for cleverness. I must force it out of them. No. Think I can? I have ways. They'll talk before I'm through. Or they'll never talk again. Much as I love you, I love Germany more. Our loves, our lives are nothing to the Reich. If these men have a message to deliver, they must deliver that message. Of course. What was I thinking of? My poor darling, you are so tired. Shame of myself. Nerves. Only nerves, darling. Even our great Führer has his attacks of despair. But he very wisely rests. <laughs> and so must you. Go home, darling, and sleep. Please. What is that I should know? <laughs> Go home and rest. You must rest. Thanks. Good night. And thank you for saving my aunt. Good night, darling. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler.
you heard. Yes. You must get those Americans away from him. You must stop them from delivering the message. If they were prisoners, anxious to escape, it would be different. As our contacts inside the concentration camp, but... How soon can you reach them with a the message? Not before morning. We can work only through the kitchen. That we'll have to do. Get ready to start a message through tonight. Mush again. Don't they have anything else to eat in Germany? I hope not. Well, how do you like that? Some cook left a part of his deck of cards in the mush. That kills what appetite I had. Hey, go pick that out. What if I don't? Do I get thrown in jail or something? No, but you get ants all over our cell if you throw stuff around. Hey, Johnny. Huh. You're going to have to improve your jail manners if you're going to room with us. Never throw food around. You get ants, flies, roaches, brats. Well, we'll have more livestock in here than you get in a zoo. <laughs> See, no wonder the cook ditched this to Jonah. Now, why did that card have to come to me? Oh, that's a lot of malarkey about the ace of spades being a death card. Don't pay any attention to it, Dutch. Yeah, well, it's yours, Johnny. Keep it for a souvenir. <laughs> Thanks, I think I will at that. My luck can't be much worse. Hey, there's writing on this. It says... Don't forget, we've got Mike sitting in on this deal. And it's his turn to play dummy. There's a guy on that gate, too. Remember that. Now, listen. If we play like this, don't mean a thing. The guy will never get wise. But the minute we start to whisper about this card, he's going to want to know what gives. Well, it says he knows. X, X. What do you suppose that means? <laughs> well, he knows obviously means that our host is all wised up. Well, certainly them two X's ain't kisses. <laughs> it's the old double cross in spades. And it's signed at the bottom, Rosebud. Rosebud? Yeah. Back in England, they say there's a girl over here who helps smuggle prisoners out of Germany. Oh, oh okay. baloney. Oh, they even say she's got contacts all over the continent with high officials. Oh, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> Some of them even say there's a big reward out for her. Oh, I <laughs> like that. <laughs> well, boys, uh, I think that's our cue to Amscray. <laughs> okay, Steve, when? Now. Remember what I told you. You stay put. How do you like that? <laughs> Guys like us sitting here in jail, getting a card signed Rosebud. <laughs> What's that about Rosebud? Oh, well, hello, Snowpuss. <laughs> we got a card here from Rosebud. How'd you like to put that in your album? Let me see the card. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'll keep it myself. They tell me that there's a big reward out from whoever turns her in. I could use a piece of change. Give me the card. Oh, now, wait a minute. I'll give you one little look. Let me have the card. I told you I could sneak my way out of here. These locks look good, but they're put together with soft iron rivets. They come apart like a baby's bag. In political cell 15, microphone does not work. Yeah, I can hear nothing. Yeah, I will proceed there at once. I live, I live. Put this room here. Get him up. Boss, it's close. Back into that cell and keep your hands hot. Hurry up. Take him, Dutch. Grab him, Johnny. <laughs> chance we got a crashing out of this joint is to grab ourselves a big shot for a fall guy. You guys stall out here while I go in and get hacked. 
daylight? Why, sure. That's the best chance. Nobody's expecting them. Here, take this and get in them bushes. I'll be back in a minute. Colonel Hecht's office. Captain Kuhn speaking. No, Colonel Hecht is not in. If only he was on his way about ten minutes ago. Halt! Who are you? What do you mean by sneaking into this office without knocking? Sir. Come here! Yes, sir. What is your name? Henry Gross, sir. Your identification card. Quickly! This is our payoff, not yours. Well, I like this better than a firing squad. Look! Take the Countess home immediately! Unsinking us. The ace of space. There was a message on it. He knows. Double cross. And it was signed Rosebud. Okay, Johnny. Watch for that road. There. There it is. I will send someone for you after dark. What gives you, sister? Without friends to protect you, they will have you shot within an hour. I will take the car, throw them off the trail, and arrange a hiding place for you during the day. Okay, all right. Stay hidden. She's wonderful. Yes, but she said hi, didn't she? Well, let's hide. Come on. It, it was so, so terrible. It will be more terrible for them. Can't you remember more? They turned into a little side road. It led no there. So they backed out again. We saw it from the tracks, and then? They drove like madmen. I guess I must have fainted. 
When I came to, they were gone. I do not know where. Try to think. It means everything to me. I was alone in the car in the village when I came to. I tried to drive home, but some officers questioned me. <laughs> then you, you brought me home. <laughs> I am so glad to be alive. And in such good care. Dear Colonel, the shock had been great. Now, if you are quite finished. Yes, yes, of course, but this is duty. Yes? No trace? Keep searching. They can't be far away. And look for them in the open. Don't waste time looking for them in the out-of-the-way places. For that's where they never go. They can't fool me on that again. Poor old Dutch. Last I saw of him, he was pouring lead into them honeys. Giving us a chance to make a break. Too bad. A man can't ask to find a way to die than protecting his friends. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Dutch always wanted a fancy funeral. And that kind of burns me up. We're not going to be able to give it to him. Listen, somebody's whistling Yankee Doodle. It's the only tune no Nazi would ever whistle. Must be our signal. Let's take a look. Now be ready to blast if this is a trap. Follow me at a distance. Someone should stop me, hide until I've gotten rid of them. Then follow me to the hideout. a signal whistle. Well, I don't know how to thank you for saving our lives. I am not sure I have saved them yet. Uh, your name is... I am the Countess Elsa von Brunt. Well, this is Mr. I D know all the gentlemen from the reports of the German intelligence department. Oh, you do? Hmm. Sit down, please. Oh, thanks. Not very luxurious, but safe. That's a nice hideout. Thank you. What is the message you have for Hitler? Oh, you're wise to that, huh? Naturally. Otherwise, I never would have bothered to get you out of that prison. It certainly was lucky you happened to be there right in the nick of time. That was planned. Unfortunately, you moved a little faster than I thought possible. However, you have not answered my question. My deal with Hitler is strictly on the QT. I'll tell him, nobody else. I do not believe you have a message. Oh, and I love toast. <laughs> you take me back to my kid days. You don't think you can con me into talking, do you? Well, you may as well have it straight. I'm against everything that Hitler stands for. If you have anything that will help the Nazis, I am going to see that you never live to deliver it. Is that uh, clear enough? You know, you remind me of a little gal back home. Betty Paradise. Remember her, Joe? <laughs> Pretty as a picture. And just as dangerous as a pocket full of loose razor blades. But what a dame, brother. What a dame. Never mind the compliment. What is your deal? 
To rub him out. What? To rub him out, to bump him out, to kill him. Impossible. You could never get close enough. He never goes anywhere without his personal bodyguard, the elite guard. Every trick has been tried. No, impossible. We had a guy just like that back home. Big shot. Armored car, bodyguard, all that stuff. Well, he got in my hair. So I figured out a little message for him. A message that had to be whispered to him. Alone. Well, he fell for it, and that was that. So I figure if I can get close enough to Hitler to whisper to him, nobody will have to worry about him anymore. You would never have a chance. Look, sister, have you ever seen a big shot bumped off? No. Well, let me tell you something. Everybody goes crazy, absolutely nuts. You have about 10 to 15 minutes before anybody starts to think straight again. Just give me those 10 or 15 minutes and that's all I want. Although millions share your idea that to kill Hitler would end the war, it is not true. His military leaders would carry on without him. Perhaps even better. Huh, I'm not gonna argue that with you. This is strictly business with me. I get a cool million bucks for this job. Oh, I see. Well, is it a crime for a guy to make a couple of quarters? You will be perfectly safe here, but do not leave. Maya will get you anything you want. Good night. What did I do? You know, you're quite famous back in England under the name of Rosebud. I am even more famous in Germany under the same name. There's a wonderful welcome waiting for you over there from the boys you've helped save. That is kind of them. I will have to forego that pleasure. I will never see England again. But you can't stay on here indefinitely. Sooner or later, they're bound to get wise. I know. Well, but that would mean... I know that, too. Good night. Good night. Good night. Boy, did I have a good night's sleep. That's the first night I've been able to sit back and let somebody else run the joint since I left that good old rock. My fist is ready whenever you are. I'm ready right now. Say, hey, will you look at those eggs? I haven't seen eggs like that since we left the States. I thought you had rationing here. That's only for the people. Friends of Hitler get the best of everything. By the way, have you ever met the guy? Twenty years ago, I saved his life. Yeah? Well, we all make mistakes. It was in Bavaria. Some drunken students tried to kill him for making a crazy speech. It beat him with broken beer steins and left him for dead. I took him home. Sewed up his lip where the broken beer steins had cut it completely through. In my own house, I nursed him back to health. I was a young doctor then, proud of my work. I'm not so proud now. I should think that would set you in solid with him for life. He hates me. Well, there's a lot of people like that. We can't stand anybody that knew him when. It is even more childish than that. My operation left a crooked scar on his lip mm. that made him appear to be sneering all the time. He grew his mustache to hide that scar. Mm. I knew a guy in Philly like that. He had a scar. Hey, wait a minute. Did you say that Hitler had a scar under that monster of his? He raised it to hide that scar. That's all I want to know. Baby, these two little fellas are going to live with me from now on. They can bring on their phony Hitlers. I got the password right here in my pocket. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps not. He may even have been clever enough to put scars on the lips of all his doubles. That's greater, warning us that someone is coming. Do not speak above a whisper. Hi, Hitler. Where is the Countess? Here I am, darling. <laughs> so happy you could come. I have some news for you. Pleasant and unpleasant. Yes. Let us have the pleasant news first. I have discovered, before making the mistake of my life, that these Americans came here to kill our Führer. Oh, you must be mistaken. No. Papers found on the man we shot prove that they were commissioned by a wealthy American to come here and murder our Führer for $10 million. 
Joe probably added an extra zero on to the million and up to the ten. News of this has reached our Führer. He has sent orders to have the remaining Americans ready to be executed in his presence when he arrives. Otherwise, uh, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Otherwise, the village is to be punished for harboring anyone with designs upon his life. Punished? In what day? A total blood purge. Oh. Our Führer wisely has decided to show the world that he can deal out punishment with an even hand. Villages in Germany, villages in occupied countries, all will suffer alike for any attempt against our leadership. And the women and children. And their houses burned to the ground. Women and kids. Just let me get my hands on that Hitler. Just once. Every house must be searched from top to bottom. I'm sorry. But orders are orders. Of course. Inside. Search everywhere. Miss nothing. And be quick about it. Go. some more slugs for this thing. I'd feel better with a Tommy gun. You'll find all kinds of ammunition right here, gentlemen. My, you fill my heart with joy. Nothing upstairs, sir. What are you standing here for, blockhead? Out! Nothing on this floor, sir. Out! I have the supreme honor of reporting this house clean. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now I have to go, for I have many more houses to inspect. But I will see you tonight. Not so? I have not yet received my official orders to dance for our Führer. You will very soon. I have ways of knowing. <laughs> Until tonight, then. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Hello? Just a moment. Captain Kuhn for you. Good morning, Captain Kuhn. Heil Hitler. Tonight at 7, a military escort will conduct you from your home to our destination. You will be in readiness. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. I understand perfectly, Captain Kuhn. But how about the music? I would like my regular quartet. Schubermann, Dicté, Koch and Niemeyer. You know them, they have worked for us before. Thank you. Heil Hitler. Call the musicians and tell them to report to Captain Kuhn, their passes, and be here at five for rehearsal. I have just talked with Colonel Hex. Yeah, I heard through the wall. Then you know. Yeah, I know. I know that a lot of dames and kids are going to get knocked off if we ain't turned in. For something they don't know nothing about. For some things that would not end the war, even if it should succeed. Yeah, that's what you think. Where's this shicker Gruber going to be tonight? His country place is about a mile from here. But you couldn't possibly get near. So those would be blocked. And there is a high voltage electric fence all around the place. Well, he's got to get to the joint, don't he? What road's he going to take? He will fly in, in order to avoid possible landmines. He has his own special plane, landing field, concealed, bomb-proof hangar, separate underground entrance. They sure go to a lot of trouble, don't they? Just to protect a guy that don't mean nothing to keeping up this war. I did not say that he meant nothing. I said that to make an attempt on Hitler's life would bring a blood purge on this district that would wipe out hundreds of innocent lives, including all of our loyal German friends. I will not be party to any such attempt. Who said anything about an attempt? 
I'll get to the guy. And when I get to him, it'll be an end to him and all his blood purges. And I ain't kidding, sister. The subject is closed. Tonight, Maya will guide you to your next hideout on the way out of Germany. You will be passed from station to station until you are out of the country. That much I will do for you, but no more. I leave you in Maya's hands. Goodbye, gentlemen. Good luck. Did you hear what that dame said? Yeah. She's gonna double-cross us. Well, she's right. Why should innocent people be murdered just so you can make a million dollars? I don't care about that million bucks. As far as I'm concerned, you can take that million and stick it right back in the treasury. Right now, the only thing I want to do is put a stop to the killing of dames and kids by knocking over the only guy in the world that's rotten enough to do such a trick. Are you with me? What do you think? I better start taking your lunch. What would you like? I ain't hungry. I gotta find a way. Joe, we gotta. We gotta. What on earth? I left your quartet a little beer to refresh themselves while waiting to rehearse. Do you suppose it could have been too much for them? No. What was the meaning of this? Well, we had to crash the party somehow, Countess. Maya. Where are my musicians? In the cellar. Release them instantly. And have them blab their heads off? Sister, ain't you got no respect for human life? One peep out of those guys and we're dead ducks. You think you are very clever? Mm, I get by. Can you play us a violin? Well, I never tried, but I think maybe if I... Oh. <laughs> Look, sister, I can play a very fine tune on one of these little things. And if you don't think so, you just follow us around tonight. You will never get by the guards. These passes, we get off the musicians, say we will. You, you will be recognized. In these monkey suits and with these things? Don't make me laugh. Hitler. Hi, Hitler. Hi, Hitler. I have the honor to report that an escort is waiting for the Count von Brunt and the four musicians. Uh, we are ready. So, excellent. I will take the passes now. Oh. Excellent, you are ready, not so? We are ready. Consider Beethoven our latest composer. Remember this wonderful theme in the Fifth Symphony? Very 
very beautiful, my friend, but that happens to be Brahms. La da da di da 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 da. Remember now? Very precisely. That's Beethoven. Brahms. Why are you? Let's go over to the musician and ask him. All right, we'll see you. You is right. Bring this theme of Beethoven's fifth. Fifth what? Fifth symphony, you blockhead. Oh, yes, sir. <clears throat> Uh, how does it go now? He's coming. Where? Right over those trees. Is he, Joe? What's that for? Asking if it is safe to come in. His guards will signal back. There. He has a signal and is coming in. He don't take no chances, does he? Where's this hangar? Under the garden. He will step from his plane to a private elevator. It's a sweet sounding motor job. Think you can fly it? I can fly anything that's got wings and half a motor. You may get a chance to prove that. since the early days of Munich. Munich, birthplace of the Third Reich, a city destined to live forever in deathless history. There my destiny began. There the new world, my world, sprang from my brain. Munich, city of destiny. Now? Yeah. Yeah, I gotta make sure of something first. Today, Europe, tomorrow the world, irresistibly the German might will conquer all foes. Russia, England, America, Japan. Japan? With Russia for a base, with the English Navy at my command, with the American scrofling at my feet, I will take Japan by telephone. The Russian campaign already has made Napoleon look like a fool. Napoleon? It is no honor to surpass his silly little pranks. What I have done is nothing. When you hear of my plan for the conquest of America, then you will have the measure of royal greatness. Of course, we don't dare ask. Why not? Did I ever try to conceal anything? Did I not publish my camp? Did I not warn my enemies in advance of every move that I made? And did I not do it in spite of their forewarned knowledge? Didn't I? Didn't I? Yes, my fear of. No, let others hide their silly little schemes. I, Hitler, published the fate of the world and will that my orders be carried out wherever the sun rises or sets. America is already shivering in dread of me. Imagine that paying a hundred million dollars to kill me. What man before has ever had such a price on his head? No, my Führer. What about the gangsters? I hear that you let them escape. They will be captured before morning. I will witness their execution at nine o'clock promptly in the morning. You will arrange the details. Yes, my Führer. I will. Well, who are those people over there? Charming Countess von Brunt and their own orchestra. Hoping that perhaps some lovely music and dancing would prove restful. I will speak with her. Alone. Stay back, please. Countess von Brunt, I have seen you before. Perhaps in the, the feminine theater in Vienna. Turn around. You are not properly dressed for dancing. I am I'm sorry if my gown doesn't please you. It does not. There is only one gown for dancing, and it is much less than that. Look. The American gangsters. Okay. This is it. There. Understand? The American gangsters. You get the next one. Stop shooting! Stop shooting! Take him to 
Kill down your guns. Open! You got a pretty well trained, ain't you? If I didn't see it myself, I wouldn't believe guys could be that dumb. Oh, don't shoot me. For how much? Oh, I'll give you anything. I'll give you $500 million. Uh, you'll dollars. Have to do better than that, Toots. I'll give you anything. I'll uh, give you anything. I'll bet you would. Johnny, looks like you're going to get a hop in that plane. You take the Countess and see how fast you can get to England. Tell them we got Hitler alive. Leave you here to take the sock alone? Not this laddie boy. We are in this together. We will stay. You listen to me, Toots. You just get to London and start dicking with these students he is by long distance. Find out how much he's worth to him. With you making the deal from over there and me over here with little Tootsie Wootsie right under my finger, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if you could make him call off this war. Can you hold out till we make contact? Sure. I'll be at the hideout. It's safe there. They've been looking for the joint for years and haven't found it yet. Besides, you can always reach me there through the regular channels. Steve, please listen to me. Now, if I'd listen to you, I wouldn't be here. Now, go on, grab that plane and scram. Can't somebody show him where the plane is? Good, Captain Tone, do what he says. All right, kids, go get your deal made. Goodbye, Steve. Goodbye, baby. So long, Steve. Good luck. What a joke. He's dead. He was a nice guy. Cookie, you and me are going to have plenty to talk about when we're by ourselves. Have somebody open that front door and bring around the car for a fast getaway. Hear me? Nobody says, do it, do it. Hold it. Now, if anything slips here, this guy's going to get turned into a mess of dog meat. And not very good dog meat at that. Do you get it? Obey him. For my life, obey him. I will come. Signaling the victory call. He ain't kidding. My people, the car is waiting and the gate is open. Okay, you monkeys line up over there with your faces against that wall. Maya, can you drive a car? Of course I can. That's swell. We're gonna be one little happy family. Let's get out of here. So long, Joe. Thanks, kid. Emergency! Colonel Hest speaking. Get me the gas bubble chief immediately! 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 Why do you take me down here? Oh, I can see that for myself, Toots. Well, they tell everybody. So what? We still got little Drizzlefuss here to keep him in line? No. Or have we? I think we better find out. Come here. No! No! What are you going to do? What am I going to do? No! I'm going to give you a quick once-over, baby. Looky here. What no. I got for you. No! Please! Please! No! Yeah, yeah. Don't kill me! No! Masks. That's your man? That's not a man. That is Schicker, Gruber. Remember that night when I saved your life? Maya, save my life again. I give you anything in my domain. I want nothing from you. Oh. Oh, but I do. I want a little souvenir for myself. No, please. Please don't. Don't kill me. Ah. No. I'll get the shortwave going. We might hear from the kids.
Whatever is on is our Fuhrer. Shoot these people! Silence! Speak when you are spoken to. I am your Fuhrer! Silence! For the last time, where is our Fuhrer? <laughs> I, I don't know. He got away. I knew it. Nothing can stop him. He's pure genius. But I am Hitler. I am Hitler. You have spoken your own death, Swaran. Meyer, tell him about my lip. Tell him, Meyer. Outside. Oh, please. Please, oh, somebody listen to me, please. No, no. I'll put them over there against the wall. I'll take pleasure of doing this myself. I don't want to die. To think that Germany could produce a piece of filth like you? My sentiments exactly. <laughs> Don't be scared, honey. You will last but a minute. We are not afraid. Our destiny is fulfilled. We are content to rest. Don't be frightened, my dear. No. We'll be together as always. Purges mean everybody. War among men is one thing. But when it comes to butchering kids, there ain't a guy in the world, I don't care who he is, that'll stop fighting for one minute till this rotten breed of Nazis is wiped clear off the face of the earth. They have fun out against the world. Connors was right. I made a flop. Maybe it ain't Hitler, but it's the rest of you birds. I ain't gonna be here to get you. But, brother, somebody will. Somebody will. The only thing that burns me up is that... Fire! He... Fire! ...gonna be able... ...to help. Well, So Steve died, voicing in his own crude way the convictions of millions of us. Yes, gentlemen, your guess was correct. That plane you saw this afternoon was the beginning of Steve's million dollar monument. For a great service, greatly performed. But if Hitler's dead, who's this we hear about all the time in Hitler's place? Who knows? Who cares? What difference does it make whether they're led by a Kaiser, or a Crown Prince, or a Hitler? The important thing now is to make sure that they'll never muster enough strength to bring terror and death into the lives of peaceful people. I tell you, Steve is right. We must never rest until the Nazi warlords and all the things they represent are scraped off the face of the earth. We owe that much to humanity. And not least, to the honest Germans, to the Elses and the Myers and the thousands like them who have been working and dying in secret for world freedom. Now I wonder if you're willing to do your part. Sure, anything. I want you to tell the world how wrong I was in thinking that by killing Hitler, I would end war. Our enemies are the warlords and their followers, not just one person or one group. We must shatter the male fist forever and silence their cry of blood and iron with blood and iron. I think it's a swell idea. So do I. Steve Mashing. He was sure a great guy, wasn't he? A great man. Great America. 